I want to know a bit more about that or why are we doing that? Ask me um, and we will talk about it. Cool. <coughs> Lovely. So I've got lots of people from all over the place. Um, lots of different stages of pregnancy. That's great as well. Cool. So I recommend, I always ask people to be over 12 weeks pregnant before they do my classes. The main reason for that is because my classes are all online. So I can't see you. Um, and if I can see you in a studio, I can come over and say, try this or try not to do that. Or if you could avoid that at the moment in the first trimester. But being online, you know, I think I want to make sure it's as safe as possible. Now, it's very likely that in the near future, I will make my classes available for first trimester because I will add in some clearer modifications that aren't currently on my online course for the fir first trimester because there is a real, you know, there's nothing wrong with exercising and moving in first trimester. It's great for you, especially if you're already doing that. If you haven't moved much and then you're pregnant and you start to move, your body isn't as used to that movement. And depending on how your pregnancy is in those first few weeks, it would be probably more sensible to just get to the safest part of your pregnancy, which is 12 weeks and beyond, um, before you start adding in a new exercise style that you've never done before. Um, but that being said, yoga is particularly gentle at times and is a wonderfully safe practice to do while you're pregnant. So I guess a lot of it comes down to your personal feelings. How do you feel doing it in the first trimester? And does it align with what you already do? Um, and, and, and those sorts of things. It's not so clear cut. It's not so black and white. Um, so yeah, at the moment, mine are for second and third trimester, my classes, but it's likely that in the near future, it will also include first trimester. Okay. Now, if you are over 34 to 35 weeks pregnant, I generally ask you not to come up into downward dog um, and sort of more inverted postures purely for positioning of your baby. However, I will go into later why um, that also may change later because we, as we are all learning, all us birth workers and um, people who are researching this all the time, it's actually quite beneficial to come into some inversions later in pregnancy as well. Um, so that's quite exciting because that means that we can ev help you even more so with your positioning. So, I'm going to get going. We're going to start about a bit about why why I'm even teaching yoga. So as I said, we will do the yoga class in about 15 minutes. Okay, so get yourself comfortable. So my background, why do I teach yoga? How has that come about? Blah, blah, blah. Um, if the baby is breached, is it okay to do downward dog? So what a great question. Yes, it technically would be because if I'm wanting you to get your baby head down, I would ask you not to come into downward dog because the point of gravity is further away, isn't it? So if your baby's head is in your pelvis, here's Elvis. If your baby's head is in your pelvis, head down, and then you take your pelvis up into downward dog, then there is a slight concern amongst yogis and birth workers that the gravity could, could, and it's a very small could because there's loads of other elements here. We're talking about a heavy baby and we're talking about uh, your ligaments and we're talking about your anatomy. So it's likely that it's just not possible for your baby to come out, yeah, once it's engaged. But we're just talking about where this has come from, the training that I've gone on and the, the training that I've listened to, that if you put your pelvis up in the air like this, you know, the concern of bringing that head out. However, what we have now learned is by doing this, the ligaments surrounding the pelvis actually relax enough to help your babies deeper into the pelvis when you come back out of this position. Um, so if your baby is breech, there should be no concern with coming into this posture because if your baby's head is 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 up, you know, it's already up, isn't it? It's already this way. So actually coming into a downward dog position is not going to be detrimental. And in fact, it could help your babies to turn, okay? Because you're going to pull that baby out of the pelvis a little bit and help them to, to move. So let's go back to, I hope that's, that's not a very clear ex explanation with my fist as the head, but you know what I'm saying, I think. Um, so my background is actually in dance. Um, <clears throat> I was a, a dancer all my life. I danced all my childhood and then I went to train as a, a dancer, a, a professional dancer, and I went to work as a professional dancer and uh, traveled abroad and did shows and had an amazing time. And after that, when I finished working as a dancer, which was only not that long ago, actually, 
I then had a, um, and still have a dance studio business and yoga business teaching in person. And I taught ballet and all sorts of dance for quite a long time. Um, and so my background has always been dance, movement, anatomy, the body. Okay, it's just always been there. When I was living in Asia and dancing out in Asia, I was living in China actually, my best friend introduced me to yoga, Bikram yoga at the time. And Bikram yoga was massive at the time. And it's still big, but it was kind of a new style uh, that had kind of started to build a lot of popularity. <clears throat> and I went along to a Bikram class and I just did not get it. I didn't understand what the fuss was all about. I didn't really enjoy the heat. Um, I didn't know what I was supposed to feel. <laughs> And although yoga really interested me, it's, you know, the spirituality and the lifestyle of yoga, I just couldn't get on board with it. So fast forward a few years, I moved back to the UK and uh, as dancers, you, don't, you generally come into lots of injuries and mobility issues and, you know, just the intensity of dance on your body for such a long period of time. So I started going to yoga um, back in, in the UK and I chose to go to a, a kind of a vinyasa flow class, which I'd heard was a bit more fluid than Bikram and not so hot. Uh, the room wasn't hot. And I just absolutely loved it. I loved that, um, you know, different to the dance environment that I'd been in for so long. Yoga was non-competitive, non-judgmental, all accepting, all, you know, just so lovely. And I just fell in love with the movements. I fell in love with how it felt on my body, the fluidity of the movement, the creativity of the sequencing. Um, I could build up my strength if I wanted to, or I could completely unwind and relax if I wanted to. There was something in there every single week. And after a couple of years of going regularly, I decided to become a teacher. I just thought, what a lovely thing to be able to teach other people. So I went to Thailand and did a one month intensive um, Ashtanga yoga, 200 hour teacher training. If you've ever done Ashtanga yoga before, you'll know that it's, it's an intense style. And uh, that month was very difficult, very full on on my body, but it was brilliant. So I actually came into yoga with no, no thought about childbirth. Birth, pregnancy was not on my radar. This was pre-children. And although I'd always found um, childbirth fascinating, um, from more a midwifery perspective, that was always a consideration uh, to go into midwifery. When I trained as a yoga teacher, I didn't have any thought of this helping pregnancy or birth in any way it was purely for yoga for teaching yoga after i had my first baby who was back to back and who um i birthed laying on my back i went and did a pregnancy yoga teacher training just so i could ensure that any of my clients were safe if they were pregnant and they came to my classes i was able to teach them because actually with pregnancy yoga something you might not realize is it does change the practice does need to change slightly when you're pregnant. It's not always safe for not just your body, but for your baby. There are postures and things in yoga that just aren't safe to do. So this is why it's so important to see a pregnancy yoga trained teacher. It is just vital, especially if you're used to doing yoga before pregnancy, especially if you're used to doing things like hot yoga and power yoga, where it's a really strong practice. You know, pregnancy is, we're, think, we're talking about abdominal separation and we're talking about heat in your within your body especially if you're going to hot yoga and we're also talking about postures that just simply could cut off um you know blood supply to your baby and things like that if you're really intensely practicing so pregnancy yoga is super safe because it's taken out any of those things and made it really really safe um so that's a little bit about what happened with with me getting into yoga and then when i went to pregnancy yoga teacher training Again, with no preconception to, to working in this area massively, I just had this light bulb moment of, oh my goodness, yoga and pregnancy is massively important. Um, having had a baby, I just realized, why don't more of us know this? Doing these movements, doing this exercise, doing this breathing during pregnancy, oh my God, it's so beneficial. And that just kind of set me on the path to working with pregnancy. Only when I had my home birth after using yoga during my pregnancy did I then realise movement and positioning was just instrumental for births um, because of what I'd experienced at my home birth, but also what I had learned. So I went then on a huge learning journey. I did yoga for birth teacher training. I did, um, 
I'm now a hypnobirthing practitioner, I'm now a birth doula, and I've been on, I'm a fertility yoga teacher training, I've uh, done my fertility yoga teacher training, I've done my postnatal teacher training, and um, I've also been on a biomechanics for birth course with the amazing midwife Molly O'Brien, and I'm going on the advanced biomechanics for birth course in a couple of months. So as you can see, this is quite extensive, and my experience and my love for this is huge. Um, and I believe that if every single person used mobility and movement for their labour and their birth, we would be seeing a huge surge in positive birth experiences and outcomes and um, smoother, more comfortable labours and births and far more physiological births than we are seeing, um, as statistics show. So you may be surprised to know, so that's about my experience and I hope that clears up, you know, who's teaching you because that's really important. And I created the online course that I have to make it accessible. I would teach people in a studio who would just not be able to get there some nights because their partners weren't home from work or they were too exhausted to come out or it was too cold or whatever it might be. And I just wanted everybody to have access to yoga. So I put a, a course online that uh, you could do from home because the benefits are huge. And the, court, the classes in my course are all short, you know, 20 to 30 minutes just to make sure that you can do it around your schedules, your energy levels. It doesn't have to be an hour long all the time. It doesn't have to be every single day. You can do it here or there. But the thing about yoga is the way it's going to benefit you is if you do it regularly. And it's an accumulative effect. Doing one class isn't going to have the impact that doing regular yoga is going to have on your birth. I promise you that. Okay, now... Let's think about the yoga then. You see, you, um, you may be surprised to know that 80% of people give birth on their backs. Uh, we know the benefits of not birthing on our backs and how detrimental that can be. And I'm still so gobsmacked that, you know, uh, the knowledge of upright birthing, I know it's out there, of course it is out there, but it's not talked about enough. And yoga is kind of that route into learning about your body and learning about what feels good, learning about what feels comfortable and learning about your own choices of movement. You know, what feels good on your body is going to feel different on the next person's body. And in a birth room, nobody can tell you that other than you. You know where your baby is. You know what feels right because it's in your body. So when you're laboring, if you need to do something different, you know that. Nobody else does because they can't look into your baby's positioning, but you feel it. You can feel it in your body. You can feel it in your ligaments. You can instinctively move in a way that is going to help that baby's positioning. And the only person that truly knows that is you. So by practicing different movements and positioning in advance, you've already got a kind of toolbox of positions and movements that you know are going to help you and at least try and help you, even if it's not going to be you know exactly what's needed in that moment you are going to have the best idea more than anybody else in that room now um so is what i teach is it pregnancy yoga is it yoga for birth why do i use both of those phrases what is it is it the same are they different because i'm sure you've seen on my posts i probably refer to it as different things something i've got to work on because i've got to find a way of making it all come together i teach both so pregnancy yoga is yoga that is safe for pregnancy, will benefit you during pregnancy, loads of benefits, fantastic for you. Yoga for birth is specific to childbirth. It's about positioning for childbirth, about movement during childbirth, about the anatomy and the physiology of birth. Okay, so my teacher training is in both and my classes mush them both together. OK, so they are quite unique in that way. They are both beneficial for your pregnancy, regardless of how you're planning to birth your baby. So if you're planning a C-section birth, then the positioning during birth isn't going to be important. But the benefits for your pregnancy are still huge. If you are planning a upright vaginal birth uh, or even if you're not thinking upright, but you're planning to have a vaginal birth, then the benefits of the birth side of things are going to be huge. So every single person who does yoga during their pregnancy is going to feel a benefit. The benefits range from breathing techniques for stress relief and for birth. We're talking about improved sleep. The benefits are increased mobility. So just generally how you feel in your body day to day, every morning that you wake up, every evening that you go to bed, how your body is feeling in between those hours. 
Um, we're talking about maintaining your strength as well. Yoga can be as strong as you want it to be or it can be as calm as you want it to be. Yoga is going to teach you birth positions, as I said, and that comes from an accumulative effect. That isn't just one thing and then you've got it. It's practicing them all the time. Yoga can help your baby get into an optimal position, head down into the pelvis. Um, and you know what? Some, one of the biggest benefits I found when I used to teach face-to-face -face classes, women would turn up, they'd get their mat out, they'd sit down, we'd have our music on, we'd have our lighting low, and they'd sit down and we'd start our breathing and a lot of them would just stop, just stop, unwind, let's just take a moment. Sometimes there would be some tears, people just having a little moment to release, stresses at work, stresses with the commute home, stresses at home with another baby, relationship stresses, family stresses, worries about birth, worries about the pregnancy. You know, all of these things that consume our minds during pregnancy, do we ever kind of stop and address those? Because they are eating us up and they are causing our cortisol levels to increase. Okay, and what's that doing to our blood pressure? You know, yoga is that opportunity to just stop. And I would often sit and we'd take a few good minutes to breathe. And yeah, people would have a little cry. It would feel quite emotional at times. Or people would just, some people would text me after and say, um, it's the first time I've thought about this baby because I'm so consumed with my other child or my job. Or it's the first time I've just sat and remembered I'm growing a baby. So I think that's hugely beneficial. We know what stress does to us and we know the benefits of unwinding and yoga can be that opportunity to you, for you. The other thing I'm gonna say is that yoga is safe. Yes, it's safe if you've never done it before. If you've never tried yoga before, it's your first opportunity or your first chance trying it. Yes, it's safe. That's the great thing about it. Yoga, uh, unlike other exercises, if you suddenly decided to take up running or you suddenly decide out of nowhere during pregnancy to take up weight training or to start going to quite intense prenatal HIIT classes, you know, that is something that is more intense on the body. And it's perfectly safe to do those things, by the way, if you're used to doing them, that is fine. Again, make sure your teacher is pregnancy trained. But of course, it's safe to do those things. But if you've not done any exercise, perhaps you've been particularly unwell or fatigued during your pregnancy and you've not actually done much for a while, <clears throat> yoga is safe. You're always going to have an opportunity to take things slower and an opportunity to take things up as well. And it's a great complementary exercise to running, to weight training, to HIIT. It really keeps your mobility going and it really balances out, <clears throat> excuse me, balances out any more intense exercise as well. And lastly, one of the lovely things about yoga is it could actually be something that you just enjoy doing. Um, pregnancy is a new time. It's a time for new things. It's a time for new beginnings. And even if you've never even considered it being for you, yoga is something that you might actually just enjoy it. Again, I've had so many online clients say, I've never really liked yoga, but I've started doing the course and I'm loving it. It makes me feel so much better. Or it could energize you in the morning or make you sleep better. Um, there are lots of benefits there as well, purely just for enjoyment. Um, and that why not? You know, we need to do things in life that we are enjoying. And pregnancy is a great time to do that. So we're going to do a little class now. Um, I'm going to talk you through it the whole time we're doing it. And um, you don't, as I said earlier, you don't need much space. I'm going to be back on my mat. So I'm going to try and vocalize everything and make it as clear as possible to you. I was going to put on my artificial bump to show you all my alignment and stuff, but I'm gonna just speak to, the, to you about that because actually I'm gonna get quite hot doing that <laughs> with my bump on, but I'm gonna show you where I'd like you to place your legs or whatever. Now, a lot of this comes down to personal feeling. So if something is feeling ugh, not right, uncomfortable, painful even, then just stop. You know your body better than anybody else. And it is a feeling of just, nah, I don't really like this. It's highly likely that everything will feel nice because these are all mobility and stretches that are going to really aid ailments. So during pregnancy, you know, lower back discomfort, upper back discomfort, sore, achy muscles, hip tightening. Oh my God, the ailments for pregnancy are endless. Yoga is there to help every single one of them. There is a posture for everything. Um, so hopefully everything that you feel today is going to feel really, really nice. But if anything doesn't feel nice, please just stop. Um, 
you can stop altogether or you could just stop for that pose. And then when I've moved out of that posture onto something different, you can join in again then. And we're gonna come to standing as well as be on the floor. And I'm not going to do anything today that isn't okay for everybody to do, okay? Okay, as long as you are over that 12 weeks um, mark. So, quick drink of water. Let's get into it, shall we? So, come and find yourself a comfortable spot to sit on or in. You can sit cross-legged. I'm just turning my monitor off, sorry, bear with me. Um, and if you were going to do my online course you could of course set up your environment which is really important and you could lower your lighting you could put dif um, you could diffuse some oils you could put music on i actually highly recommend using your birth playlists if you've got one uh, or creating one and then practicing your yoga with your birth playlist and with your oils on and what this is doing is creating that accumulative environmental effect which if you replicate during your labour is going to really help your hormones to flood the body and we know what that does for labour and if you don't you can go back and watch all my videos about it. So you can use a cushion if you want to, we're going to just simply sit comfortably, in fact I'm going to move forward a little bit. Now if you've got any pelvic pain or discomfort you can still do a lot of this yoga class but again just check in with how that feels. You might prefer to sit with your knees together because for pelvic pain we want to stabilise the pelvis the pelvic ligaments as well so keeping your knees together is going to be far more beneficial for you otherwise come and sit on your cross leg like me okay and i'm sitting on a cushion and i'm just going to wiggle out a little bit i'd like you to do the same just check that your seat boat bones are nice and planted into the ground and just placing your hands on the ground next to you just be reminded of that stability of the floor okay Good job. Let's just roll the shoulders out. We're just going to take a moment to sit. So let's give a little wiggle first. And then we're going to stop wiggling into the centre, just aligning ourselves in the centre. And then I'd like you to either close your eyes down completely, or if you're feeling nauseous at all or any sort of dizziness with your eyes shut, then just lower your eye gaze slightly to the floor for me. And I've just relaxed my arms here onto my knees, but you can do whatever you'd like with your hands. In a moment, we're going to move them. And just lowering that eye gaze, as I said, or closing the eyes completely, I'd like you to draw your attention to your breathing. And all I want you to do is just notice it. Don't need you to change your breath at all or try anything new, just simply breathing as you are. Maybe the environment around you is quiet and still, or perhaps there are noises and voices going on. And that's perfectly okay. We can still really learn how to relax with noises going on around us. That is the beauty of yoga, is it's teaching us how we can switch off where possible. I'd like to draw your attention to the space between the eyebrows. So even though your eyes are lowered, just imagining that space between the eyebrows. This is a way of just centering our focus for a moment. And as you breathe, just notice how you are feeling sat there right now. What's going on in your mind? What's going on in your body? What can you feel? What are you aware of? If you need to fidget or wiggle, that's absolutely fine. And we're going to take one hand now to your chest. I'd like to place it there. And just connect with the rise and the fall of your breathing. So as you inhale, feel that rise in the chest, hand lifting as you breathe in. And falling as you exhale. A few times through. And remember if there are noises, if the doorbell goes, or if something happens, it's perfectly okay. You can just stop and come back to this or you can kind of continue through it. You know, we have to realise our lifestyles aren't always going to be conducive to, to what we want it to be for yoga. And we have to just adapt to what we have, don't we? So with the other hand, I'd like you to now place that onto your baby for me. Your babies, if you're expecting more than one. And just taking a moment now to connect all of this together. Your breathing... 
that rise and fall of the breath and the chest and then also remembering what's going on in your tummy right now, your baby. Perhaps feeling some movement or just acknowledging what's going on in there. Maybe this is the first time in a while that you've actually thought about what your body is doing every second of every day. And all we're doing is breathing, taking a few moments. We can start now to let go of any consuming thoughts, letting go of today's schedule, letting go of what's next, letting go of you know the plans for lunch, the plans for dinner tonight, what you're doing tomorrow, have you done that yet or this yet? Let that go. Yoga is the time to clear that space. We can come back to that stuff later. We're relieving that pressure, feel those shoulders come down. That stuff is not important right now. Lovely, a couple more rounds of breath. Remembering we are all, this is all connected. The breathing, your baby, your body, your mind, it's all part of the same. Good. Lovely, and let's just now blink our eyes to open them. Good job. And taking your hands away from your body, I want you to take them up to the ceiling now. So taking them outside of the body, up towards the ceiling, and lengthening your fingertips upward. Now as you get here, if you look at my shoulders here, I'd like you to just draw them down because what I'm doing here is I'm creating tension, aren't I, in my neck and my shoulders, but we don't need that. We can just drop that, let it go. Really draw those shoulder blades down the spine, but you're still feeling lengthened in the arms, the fingers and the spine. Maybe you can slightly pull one arm up to the ceiling and then the other side, reaching a little bit further up. We're just kind of lengthening our side bodies, creating a bit of space in the rib cage, maybe you're feeling like you're running out of space, maybe you're feeling like babies kicking into the ribs and things. So just creating a bit of space. And now thinking about, keep going where you are, I'm just gonna to point to it, keep, you keep going. Think about this area, our waist. I'd like you to just kind of sway and swing gently into the waist here, creating some nice ripply movements. And again, think about all that space you're bringing here into the body. You know, allowing your baby to find a bit of space and just feeling like you can catch your breath, perhaps. And just breathe through it, lovely. And then taking your two hands, interlacing your fingers together, turning your palms up to the ceiling and lengthening again. This time, again, drawing those shoulders down, but thinking about that spinal column lengthening here, really drawing up. You're drawing out of the top of the head, feeling like I'm pulling you up towards the ceiling with a piece of string from the crown of the head. Breathing here, but the shoulders are down. Beautiful. How does that feel? Good job. And again, let's just take those lovely swaying motions side to side from the waist. Good. Keep that going while I just move my cushion. Well done. And then we back a little bit. Keep that swaying. Good, and then stopping into the center now, we're just gonna release your right hand down to the floor. Take that left arm, reach it up towards the ceiling a little bit more, and then walking your lower fingertips away from the mat, hand into the mat, and side stretch over. So notice how I'm not doing this. We wanna open that chest upward. This is not gonna get you the same strength, the same stretch, but also we're twisting inwards, which we don't wanna do during pregnancy. We wanna open up. So that chest is lifting up to the ceiling. You are lengthening out that top hand and feeling that beautiful stretch running down the rib cage into your waist, into that hip. Good job. Planting that bottom on the ground still, looking up towards the ceiling if that's available to you. Good job. And then just bringing that top arm up to the center, and we take that to the other side. So lower hand is walking away. Right arm is lifting up to the ceiling. 
or the other arm, depending on the camera angle, and your side stretching again, feeling that beautiful lengthening stretch down that side body into the rib cage, into the waist, into the hip. Chest is lifted up, that top shoulder as well is drawing down the body. Again, if you look at me, we don't want to have this. Can you see how I'm creating tension here? Draw it down, open that chest into that side stretch, beautiful, coming back to the centre, really nice, and then taking both hands up to the ceiling, palms touch and we come down the centre line, we're going to con continue this circular movement with our arms coming up, palms touch and coming down, we're going to use our breath now to synchronise the movement, which is really important with yoga, so we're going to breathe in to lift up, and we're going to come out, breathing down, breathing out as we come down, out through the nose or the mouth, breathing in. Energize the body, lovely, breathing out to come down, let it go. Two more times, inhale, lengthen that body, exhale down. Last time, breathing in, lift up that body. Inhale, lift up those energy levels. Exhale to come down. Lovely. Really nice, everybody. Taking your hands to your knees. I'd like you to just trace a rainbow shape from knee to knee. Rainbow from knee to knee. And with your chest, you are going to trace that rainbow. Forward and down. Now, if you're feeling like you don't have enough space to do this, perhaps your babies are big, your bumps are ready to you know, be towards the end of pregnancy and you're giving birth soon, then you're going to feel that this just doesn't do much for you. So in that case, I want you to focus more on the side to side. But as you're doing this, wherever you are, rainbow shapes or side to side, draw your attention to your lower back. Okay, think about all of that massage that this movement is doing for the lower back. Okay, thinking about the pressure that our lower back is under the entire time through growing a baby and our core muscles having a lot of work to do and therefore our back takes the strain in carrying our babies, we can get really sore lower backs. So let's just massage them here, moving side to side, good. You may even choose also to make complete circles like this, forward and back, forward and back, good. You might wanna go the other way See how that feels for you. Perhaps you prefer to stick to one direction. Maybe you want to go in both. Perhaps you just prefer to stick to the rainbow shapes. Whatever works for you. Because remember, as your teacher, I can only tell you what I think will really help you. But you know how it feels in your body. And nobody else knows that. Good. So once we've given our lower backs a little massage, we're going to come back to the centre. Good. And we're just going to tilt our heads now. So our right ear down to the right shoulder. And I want you to just let that head go. Try to release the shoulder as well. Good job. And then bring your chin down to the chest. Take the other ear down to the shoulder. Pull the opposite shoulder down slightly just to create a longer line and a deeper stretch in the neck. And again, chin to chest, roll it forward and to the side. Continue that movement in your own way, at your own pace. There's no rush. You're just simply waking up the neck. Perhaps you've slept awkwardly or maybe you're carrying more tension than you realised. Let's massage the neck. Good. A few more times. Beautiful. Good job, and coming back to the centre, well done. So let's get moving now, let's just shake out those wrists. Any swelling or anything in the fingers, let's keep that circulation going. Take that into the elbows and the forearms. Let's wake up the body a bit. Good, let's shake it out. Shake out the arms and the fingertips. Shake the arms up and down. Wiggle those shoulders, how do they feel? And we're going to move on to all fours, okay? So, follow, follow, follow me. Try not to just hoik yourself up, which you're probably used to doing. Think about our core. We're going to think about diastasis the whole time. We've got to protect our bodies. Take your hands to the side and roll up 
all right? That's the safe way for us to get up. So we're gonna come onto all fours now. So all fours is possibly my most favorite pregnancy and birth position here. So I'd like you to take it so that your knees are underneath your hips, your wrists are in line with your shoulders. You don't wanna be here or here. Okay, I want nice alignment, shoulders over wrists, knees under hips. And we're simply going to rock. You're just rocking left to right. Okay, I'll show you, you just stay where you are. You're just rocking, bit of movement here. All right, I want you to just get a feel for this. Spread your fingers out. Can you spread your weight into the whole of the hand? Try not to hold weight in just the wrists or just the fingers, but actually spreading, spreading the weight throughout the palm, throughout the hand, okay? And I want you to watch my lower back here, what I was talking about a minute ago, with the strain on your lower backs. Can you see if you're doing this? Can you see what I'm doing here? Now, big during pregnancy, of course, the weight of your tummy, the weight of your baby is going to draw your tummy down to the floor. And what that's doing is, it's creating a lot of strain in that lower back. Look at that shape. That is not actually how your back wants to be. And the whole time that you're pregnant, and we're talking about walking around, talking about standing in queues, talking to friends, carrying other children, you know, that lower back is really taking the hit. So in yoga, what we do, you know, regularly is remind you of the, acute, the alignment needed for your lower back. So what I want you to think about doing is actually hugging your babies in towards your spine. Look at that neutralizing of the lower back. Again, hug those babies slightly in towards the spine. Okay, and you're protecting your lower back. Now, if you are feeling a sore lower back, it's a very common ailment, but you actually don't have to have that sore lower back. If you're working on your alignment on a regular basis, you're going to create new habits for how you stand and sit and move. And that is gonna protect your lower back from any ongoing discomfort. And that is just so lovely. When you're pregnant, to not be comfortable, uh, sorry, to not be uncomfortable, that's what we want. We wanna feel good, we don't wanna feel uncomfortable. So, with our neutralized lower back, I want you to imagine you have a tail here, and I want you to rock and wag your tail, left to right. Wag that tail, like a little puppy. Good. And as you're doing that, hug that baby in towards the spine. Good. And you're just releasing any tension in the lower back here. You might not actually feel it right now, actually, because one of these one, this posture is one of those that you generally feel the benefits of later on. Um, tuck that baby in and wag that tail. Beautiful. Good job. Okay, so from here, we're going to take my, one of my favourite upper back stretches. We're going to stop in the centre here. And you're going to walk your arms forward, sinking down onto the forearms if you can. And my bottom is lifting up towards the ceiling. And what I want you to try and do is sink that, melt that chest towards your mat. Now, it might feel like quite a deep stretch for some of you, depending on your mobility at the moment. It might feel absolutely wonderful. And um, you might actually be able to keep your chin onto the floor and the mat looking ahead of you, or you might prefer to lower your forehead down. So however you feel it and wherever you feel it, I want you to just focus on your breathing here because this is so lovely for your upper backs. This is also a lovely one postnatally for feeding, um, releasing the back after lots of feeding and carrying your baby. So just using your breath here, I want you to inhale, and then exhale, letting go, let go. Inhale, exhale, release that tension, release that upper back, lovely. Inhale, exhale, keep it going, lovely. As you inhale, broadening those shoulder blades across the back, Good, exhale, releasing it all away. Good job, and very slowly, we're gonna walk those hands back towards your body and coming up to all fours, nice and slowly, good job. Well done. And just give your body a wriggle now in any way that feels right, just wiggle. Now, the reason I love all fours so much is because this is the way that I think most of us want to give birth on all fours, because 
If you're looking at Elvis right here, your sacrum is free in all fours position. You have gravity on your side, bringing your babies down and you can rock your hips, which is going to really ease your ligaments, your pelvic ligaments during contractions. It is such a wonderful position, but it's also the way that we, you know, we're animals. We, we would give birth like this in the wild. This is how we would move our bodies, you know, we would create different shapes. We're going to move in a different way in a minute, which is a similar way that are making some different shapes. I'd like you to, from here, look forward to the front of your mat and step your right foot to the front. This is another shape. And you want your knee just over that front ankle and your arms are on the inside. <clears throat> and you're just gonna rock forward and back like this. Just rock forward and back, good job. So just check that front foot is planted to the ground, knee is over ankle, not over the toes. <clears throat> if your knee is over the toes, just adjust slightly. And using that position, as you rock, think about that right hip. Just again, massaging it and opening it and creating more mobility. But also during labour and birth, what this is doing is it's giving your pelvis a lovely, lovely shape to help your baby navigate. You're slightly tilting and lifting that right side. And that is going to really help any slightly awkward laying babies, you know, babies that are slightly suboptimal position. But also your body will just know if it's the right leg or the left leg that needs to be lifted. And it's a wonderful position to come into. And again, animalistic positions that we are supposed to be using during labour and birth for a more smooth, a comfortable birth experience. So during pregnancy, this position is great for re releasing our glute, any sciatica pain, and just keeping our hips nice and mobile because our hips are always going to tighten during pregnancy because of the weight on the hips. And actually yoga helps to keep them comfortable and happy rather than tight and sore. Good job. You might from here, depending on your flexibility and your yoga level, you might be able to tuck your back toes underneath and draw up that back leg, pushing through that back heel into a lunge. And again, use your arms to support you as you move forward and back. Good job. Beautiful. Good job. Let's lower that back knee down. We're going to step your front leg now to the back. Good, and we're gonna just wiggle that body again. Wiggle it out. Good, how does that feel on your body? Let's do that on the other side. So when you're ready to, look to the front of the mat, step your left foot to the front. Again, check that your left foot is planted. Knee is over your ankle, not over your toes like this. This is not the right alignment for us. We need to come back. So just adjust it. And with your back knee still bent, you're just gonna rock forward and back. So think about drawing your bottoms in, and back. And again, you're really opening up this side, warming up those hips, getting them moving again, getting them more comfortable. Good, forward and back. Use your breathing to help release any tension you might be feeling here. Good. And you might notice that one side feels better than the other, feels more comfortable, feels more needed. Good job, and just breathe. Perhaps again, as I said before, tucking the back toes underneath and lengthening that back leg into a lunge position that might be available to you, or it might not be for you today, whatever feels right. Use your breathing. Good job. Nice. Good, lower that back knee down, stepping your front foot to the back so you're back in all fours, and give yourselves a wriggle. Good job. Really nice. So from here, I want you to tuck both toes at the back. You're going to rock yourselves onto the balls of the feet so you're looking like this. <clears throat> and your knees are out. And you're just going to rock side to side. Now again, this is so great for positioning. This is really opening out your pelvis. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is also really nice for your hips. And this can be a birth position as well for some people. A squat position is a very, very natural birth position. I think, I don't even think it was that long ago, 60, 70 years ago, we had birth stalls to be used for squatting. Probably a bit longer than that actually, but you know, it was a very normal place to be squatting for birth. We've now kind of become fearful of squatting and deep vaginal tearing and things like that. But actually when we know the reasons for using positions, we're not afraid of them because we know that's how we, you know, are designed to birth. Good job. So from here, I want you to kind of plant the feet down. Watch what I do first. You're going to use your hands to help you. You're going to push your bottoms slightly up towards the ceiling. Your feet are hip width distance apart. Just stay there for me. 
hey, cool. Just stay there for me. And you're still kind of rocking and swaying a little bit. So your soft knees are helping you to rock. If you still had your tail at the back, you're still wagging the tail left to right. Good job. And with your hands, I want you to walk them up your body. Come all the way up to standing. Keeping swaying, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, and come to standing. When you get to standing, just take some shoulder rolls. Good job. The reason I like you to move a lot is because if you think about our lifestyles of sitting and working and driving and sitting on a train and commuting and stopping and stopping and stopping, then our bodies in pregnancy need to move. Yeah, so moving like this is just so nice. Move those shoulders. Good. Get that upper body working and moving. Really nice. And we're going to now walk our feet away from each other like this. So you've got a quite a nice wide stance now. So if you have got pelvic pain, you might want to bring your feet a bit closer together to about hip width distance and see how this feels. But you might want to focus more on the upper body. Otherwise, widen out those legs. I want you to draw those kneecaps up the legs. Nice and strong, stable legs. And you're gonna turn your left foot towards the front edge of the mat. Okay? So we've got a warrior stance here, and you're gonna bend that front leg, knee over ankle, not over toes. Okay, knee over ankle. If you need to widen a bit more, you can. You know your body, remember, and open up those arms. Nice, wide arms, good job. Hold it there. Hey! Good job, right, hold it there. Beautiful, and arms are nice and straight, good job. I want you to feel really strong and focused here. I want you to look in front of you, gazing down that middle finger of the hand, draw those shoulders down the back, and simply breathe and focus. Think about your strength right now. Think about how focused you can be. Breathing here. Feel your feet planting down <clears throat> into the mat, nice and strong. If I were there in your room and I came and pushed you, you wouldn't budge. You're nice and strong. Good job. Shoulders rolling down the back. Good. From here, you're going to now straighten that front leg. So you've got two straight legs. You're going to slightly reach that left arm forward. Watching me, you're going to tilt down here into a really modified trikonasana. Now this lower hand can come to your hip and the right arm or the top arm is lifted, or you can slide down that leg if you're used to doing trikonasana, as long as you can keep that lovely open line in the chest. Good, so if you know your yoga practice and you're used to it, go ahead. If you're not quite used to it and it doesn't feel like that's right for you right now, come right up here, hand to the hip. You're still gonna feel the benefits. Lift up that top arm, so you've got strong legs and a lovely open line here. Good job. If you can take your gaze up towards the top hand, have a go. If you feel more stable looking ahead, that's fine. Perhaps you prefer to look down, that's fine. Good, and just breathing where you are. Good job. And then with, with gentle ease, just bending that front knee, coming all the way up to the center and turning both toes to kind of be at a slight 45 degree angle. Well done, hands to hips and we're just gonna shake them out. Bend the knees, shake those hips. Keep going, give them a shake, do a bit of Beyonce. And again, thinking about your pelvis what right now, what's this doing? Shaking those hips, creating space, allowing your babies to delve into a head down position if you were in labor right now, you know? Create some space, maybe taking some circles. We are not designed to be stopped and still during our pregnancies, we're not. We are designed to move, yeah? And these movements, oh, <laughs> don't worry, I've had, <laughs> that's fine. Um, keep moving those hips, lovely. And then come back to the center. Let's take that to the other side. So we're gonna take your right foot this time, turn it slightly out to face the back edge of your mat. Widen the stance, remember we talked about how close or not you wanted your legs to be. Bending that knee just over ankle and not the toes. And open those arms out into warrior two again. Hold it there for me, I just need to readjust my mat. Good, so holding that warrior two. Nice long arms, you're gazing down that front arm, the middle finger. 
pushing it into the ground. Now I want you to be strong. Remember, if I came and pushed you, you're not going to move because you're really strong and stable. You are focused and in control. Good. Holding it here, nice strong arms, shoulders rolling down the back. Breathing here. Good. Straightening that front leg now. Reaching that right hand beyond your mat and looking at me tilting into your trikonasana, wherever that might be. Perhaps that's here, our modified version. And if you're used to your practice, you can come into trikonasana, drawing up those knees, nice strong legs and a lovely open chest. What I don't want here is this out of alignment or this. You know, so if this is happening, you need to come back up the leg into our modified version. Yeah? Good. If you know your practice, come into Trikonasana. Breathing here. Beautiful. This is one of my favourite postures, Trikonasana, across all of yoga. I just love it. Good job. And then with gentle ease, bending that front leg so that right knee this time and coming back up. Good. Straighten the leg, turn it towards me, hands to the hips, and again, let's shake them out. We're gonna to move to the floor. So shake out those hips, give yourself a bit of movement, and with your hands, I want you to walk them on to the thighs, down towards the knees, and you're gonna to start to fold forwards, down towards the shins, good. Perhaps you can bend the knees, can you make it to the ankles? How does that feel? Maybe you need to hold on to the floor, that's absolutely fine. How does that feel? What are the hips feeling like? What's the lower back feeling like? Good. And then just watching me, take it gently, taking one knee to the floor, other knee to the floor. Good job. Well done, and sit back onto your heels. Well done, everybody. Just take a moment here. Perhaps you can feel your heart rate has increased. Take a drink of water. I know that you're all at such different stages of your pregnancy, so just take a minute. We're going to come into child's pose now, just to kind of reset ourselves a little bit. So, with your knees as wide as they feel comfortable to be, so you might want to bring your knees to the edges of the mat, you might want to keep them together if you have any pelvic discomfort, wherever they might be, in your own time, once you've had your drink and you've caught your breath, just take your hands in front of you and you're going to walk down into child's pose. Now, depending on your bump size, you might feel that you just want to come here onto forearms and rest here, bring your chin down to the chest. You might want to grab a cushion and put it underneath your bump to lay on, or you might not yet have a bump and that might feel completely okay to come all the way down here into child's pose. But wherever you are, this is just a moment of rest, of kind of reconnecting to our breath again. So wherever you've chosen to be, lower the eye gaze down or completely close the eyes. And just take a breath. Good job, everyone. Maybe you've noticed a change in your temperature. Maybe you've noticed a change in how your body's feeling or how your mind is feeling. Really nice. How are your energy levels feeling right now? Really good, well done. Last few breaths. Good everybody, well done. And after your last exhalation, just walk your hands back and come and sit comfortably with me. We're gonna do a really nice upper back release. So just come and grab the cushion that you were sitting on before or you know, wherever you were before and sit down in a way that you can just kind of stop for a minute. And we're gonna move into a really beautiful upper body release. It's the Eagle Arms. I absolutely love this for pregnancy, but also for postnatal, so any um, tightness from feeding or carrying or after birth. Um, it's a really, really lovely one. So just taking both arms out to the side for me, really lengthening out, and then crossing them in front of you. And take the right arm over the left arm and then bending at the elbows. You can either stay here if this is, feels, you know, this is to your extent of your mobility, 
you may be able to come here into a prayer position. So I'm like this. From here, I want you to work on lifting those elbows if that's available to you. It might not be, and that's perfectly okay. If it is available to you, see if you can just lift those elbows. And you might then feel like you can lower your chin down to the chest. Good, and from there, what I want you to hopefully feel is a beautiful opening in the upper back and the shoulder blades. So again, you're growing breasts, your milk production, depending on which stage you are of your pregnancy, it's likely that your upper back is feeling the need for some release and massage. And this is a beautiful one for helping with that. So as you inhale, send your energy and your attention to your upper back, and then exhale, try to release the stretch, release the upper back release into the stretch, let it go, let it happen, inhale, exhale, let it happen, lovely, couple more times, good job, and then let's just unravel those arms, good, give them a bit of a shake, take your fingertips behind you, onto the floor, and just lift that chest ever so slightly towards the ceiling, just feeling really open in the front of the body for a moment. We're not back bending in pregnancy, we're just slightly lifting. And then let's do that on the other side. Good, so come back to the centre, open both arms out. Let's cross in front, left arm on top this time, so the other way, bending at the elbow crease. You might find this feels different on this side, depending on where you carry your bag, what arm you brush your teeth with. <laughs> which side you carry your other child on, and then perhaps you can come into your prayer if that's available and don't worry if it's not. And again, from there, wherever you are, perhaps you can lift the elbows slightly. Perhaps you can lower the chin slightly. What does that feel like? Breathing here. Good job, a few more times here. Remember our tightness in our body can come from a couple of areas. It can come from our changing body and our pregnancy, but it can also here be here as a sign of stress and tension in the body. Um, you know, people who aren't pregnant feel pain in the necks, upper backs, lower backs, because we hold our bodies in a way that is, yeah, tense and it blocks our mobility when we feel that we are stressed or when we're rushing around uh, we're not feeling at ease in our body. Our body shows us that. Good, last breath here. Release the arms, unravel them, give them a bit of movement, shake it out. How does that feel? Take the fingertips behind you. So if you, as you can imagine then, if you are pregnant and perhaps having times, especially over the last year, that feel stressful or heightened, then your body is going to be showing you that in many, many ways. Um, so this is why yoga is so conducive to pregnancy because it's constantly realigning you, it's constantly massaging you. And if done regularly, it's reminding you of movements that are so conducive to your birth as well. Good. And let's just sit back into the center for me and just take those wrists again and just give them a bit of movement. Good job. <laughs> oh this feels amazing I'm so pleased I'm not even pregnant and I'm loving it I love pregnancy yoga I just love yoga good job really really nice and then just to finish I want you to take your right hand to the floor again and you're going to take your left hand behind the head and you're going to slightly tilt towards your lower hand so perhaps walk those fingers out slightly and then using your top elbow I want you to open it out looking up if you can Good. Some of these postures make you go, oh, don't they? They go, oh yeah. <laughs> you just need it, it's so nice. And often you don't even realize how much you needed it until you did it. Let's take that on the other side. So it's a really nice and gentle way to keep mobile in the upper back. So walking those lower hand away, that lower hand away slightly, and then opening up that top elbow, looking towards the elbow, if you can. And you know, today I'm just showing you some of my favourites. There are obviously so many postures, so many different 
standing postures, strengthening postures, mobility, flexibility, relaxing postures, there's loads. I couldn't possibly fit it in today. Um, but I wanted to give you an idea of what you could feel and what you could expect from pregnancy yoga and the yoga for birth. Right, coming back to the center. Well done, everybody. Right, let's just finish there. What we're going to do, as always, before we finish is a bit of breath work. I've already gone over on time. So just to finish, let's just take your hand back to your chest. That's the breath. Other hand back to your baby. And I want you to just check back in with your body and yourself again after your practice this morning. So perhaps you're already feeling distracted and that's really normal. You perhaps you want to get on with the day now. You want to go there. You want to do this. You want to put that on. You need to put a wash on. You need to do that. You need to message that person back. We all have that going around our heads the entire time. When do we ever make time just to stop that trail, just to stop that carousel of thoughts? Let's just stop. Um, so let's Place that hand on the baby, place that hand to the chest and let's just stop. Give yourself one more minute to stop those thoughts. Clean out the mind, lower the shoulders down. Ask yourself the, the question, how do I feel right now? What am I feeling? What am I thinking? Remembering what your body is doing every second of every day and night, growing your little human. It's no wonder you might feel tired. It's no wonder you might feel the need to stop. It's no wonder you might feel emotional. You're doing something really big and our society does not promote the importance of stopping. We promote busyness and rushing and pregnancy is not the time for that. So we need to remind ourselves that it's okay and needed to stop as well. Okay, everybody, let's just blink our eyes open to finish. Well done. Good job, you can join me with a namaste if you'd like to. Thank you so much for joining, namaste. I hope that you enjoyed the class. Otherwise, give yourselves a bit of a shake a bit of a stretch, a bit of a, oh, and how do you feel? Um, so I know that I've already gone over an hour, but you might, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them, but don't rush up and get on with your day too much. Just take a second, just take it gently because those are huge benefits there to your mobility, to your body, to your, to your pregnancy, to your headspace, everything. If you have any questions, I'm so pleased you enjoyed it. You're very, very, very welcome. Um, as you know, I have an online course that you can go and I'd love you to join in my classes there. There are loads there for you to enjoy. And I don't really do a lot of lives. So I'm so pleased that we did this this morning and that you joined me. And um, I hope that you found it beneficial. And I'd love to know if you were surprised by it or, you know, you never considered actually enjoying yoga, but here you are enjoying it. Or perhaps you found it harder or easier or not as intense you might have found it boring you know whatever it is that's fine you know feel how you feel about it and I really hope that yeah it brought you something this morning thank you for your lovely comments so that was a very very basic taster there's so much I'd love to throw into a class for you but I wanted to give you an idea um uh oh thank you I wanted to give you an idea of what you know your body might feel like and what yoga might feel like and um, yeah, I'm so pleased that, yeah, I was able to do that. So thank you. Um, I don't think I actually had any questions before we started because I was yabbering on, on so much, but um, I'm a member and do your course almost every day, but doing a live session is great. Please make this a regular thing. I'd love to, I'm, I'm definitely in thoughts about doing a regular live here. Um, yeah, it's about logistics, I guess, and like childcare and, and you know, life uh, at the moment, but um, I'd love to do it. So keep your eyes peeled because, you know, I love teaching. I love teaching. And that's the thing with having an online course is, you know, I don't get to see you all as I'm teaching you, but there's always time to, um, to consider something else. So keep your eyes peeled. Um, your videos are great and the live was the best. I'm so pleased. 
So I have thought about doing a pregnancy yoga Zoom course so you can book a, a, an eight week or a 10 week course with me and all those classes would be live with me, um, you know, something like that perhaps. And that's probably more accessible so that I can um, commit to doing something each week. And that is something that I've kind of been working on in the background. So I will definitely let you know if I do do that as well. All right. Um, now, I think if you've got any questions and there's something I haven't touched on please message me somebody asked me do I have any videos on using a birthing ball now I'm I'm yes I will be I don't at the moment purely because I want you to get up and physical I want you to get up and use your bodies more however I know the benefits of birthing balls are massive and I will be doing that yes just at the moment I haven't um but where possible I still love you to move but I know that for positioning for pelvic discomfort and for later on in pregnancy birthing balls are great so yeah there's lots coming um, carpal tunnel syndrome and my hands hurt so badly. Yeah, using fists. Thank you, joyful mama. Using fists can be really, really good um, as well. So do let me know if that worked for you because uh, I can understand it can be really, really uncomfortable. So see how you feel with fists as well. Okay. Um, do I have a postnatal course? Yes, I do. I have a full massive postnatal course i filmed it last september and october it's now online so you can do that anytime from six weeks after birth and there's a whole core and floor um pelvic floor section there is strengthening uh, sections there are uh, mum and baby sections there are feeding stretches there are self-care talks um yeah there's lots on the postnatal course and uh yeah it's a lovely one i really loved putting it together and there's a lot of content on there because it can see you through that first year after giving birth and beyond okay love this lucy i've been considering signing up for the membership for a while we'll go ahead and sign up oh i'm so pleased thank you remember you also get access to my members hub so once you've joined up the online course you get access into our uh, online members hub full of all the other people doing the course and uh it's so much advice on there and support about pregnancy and birth and birth stories and yeah it's really really great thank you so much right I'm going to leave you to it because that was a long one and um, I know you all want to get on with your day. So thank you for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts. Comment below this video once it's saved to IGTV. Let your friends know that they can get their hands on a free taster class and I hope to see um, some of you all soon. Oh, thank you. Um, and I'll be live again next week, Monday, remember. So um, uh, thank you, Daisy. That's so kind. 100% recommend Lucy's online course. Thank you so much. And yeah, I will be here live again on Monday with a birthday talk. So I shall see you then. Thanks again, everybody. Lots of love. Take care. Bye-bye.